Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, if you've ever looked at the specifications for a modern CPU, you may have noticed that it gives you two clock frequencies. So you kind of get a base clock frequency and a boost clock frequency. And you might be wondering why are there two frequencies and does the CPU run at the base frequency? Does it run at the boost frequency? And if it can achieve the boost frequency, why doesn't it stay there all the time? What, what does all this mean? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So first of all, just to mention that what I'm going to mention today does also apply in part to GPUs, but I'm just going to stick to CPUs for this video. Now, for example, if you were to look at the Intel i7-5960X, you'll see it has a base frequency of 3 gigahertz and a boost frequency of 3.5 gigahertz. And likewise, if you look at the AMD Ryzen 7 uh, 1800X, then that has a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost frequency of 4 gigahertz. So in both those cases, there's about maybe a 400 or 500 megahertz boost that is available for that CPU. And in fact, you find a whole range of CPUs from Intel and AMD with a whole different gamut of what is available in terms of their boost frequencies. In fact, if you look at the Ryzen 7 2700U, which is a mobile processor, it actually has a base frequency of 2.2 gigahertz and a boost frequency of 3.8 gigahertz. So that's a massive 1.6 gigahertz range in this boost area. Now, before we get into the idea of boosting the clock frequency, let's talk about the opposite, where CPUs want to drop the clock frequency. So back in the day with the 386 and the 486 and the Pentium and so on, the clock frequency of the CPU was fixed. So it didn't matter whether it was just waiting for you to press a key or whether it was in the middle of some really hard calculation, the clock frequency would remain fixed. However, this isn't very good for laptops because obviously they're running from a battery and so why would you want the CPU to run at the same frequency and use the same amount of power when actually all it was doing was waiting for you to press a key? Now there's a quick formula I'm going to flash up here on the screen which tells you a very rough way for calculating the power of a CPU usage and that is power is equal to capacitance multiplied by the voltage squared multiplied by the frequency. Now the capacitance is uh, fixed inside the design of the uh, CPU but of course you can fiddle with the frequency and you can fiddle with the voltage and notice as the voltage goes up even little bits because it's squared it can actually have a big impact on the power and also the frequency has an impact on the power. It's also worth noting that generally when you run at lower frequencies you need lower voltages which means that if the processor is able to drop its frequency then it can also drop its core voltage which means the overall power usage is actually much lower. And of course this is great for laptops because you're running on a battery and so when nothing is actually happening the voltage and the frequency come right down and the processor can run at kind of its minimum power without eating up all that battery for you. And this is the kind of thing you find in kind of Intel Speed Step, Intel Speed Shift, AMD Cool and Quiet, and there's been lots of variations and there's lots of trademarks and names and marketing that go around this, but it's basically the same principle. Lower the frequency when the processor needs to be running idle. But also the opposite is true. You can actually boost the frequency. You can also boost the core voltage, but the result is that you have to end up using more power. And when you use more power, you generate more heat. So for these processors, when they quote a base frequency and a boost frequency, what they're basically saying is the base frequency is like the old days of what the CPU is clocked at. That means that all the cores and all the threads can run at this frequency and the processor won't overheat and it won't burn out because the voltage is too high. It can run at this all day long and that is how it's designed to be. But of course, we're not always pushing all eight or all four cores or however many cores and threads you've got in your processor to the maximum at every moment. Sometimes you're just doing something that requires a, a bit of work, a lot of power, but actually only on one or two cores. Now, if you're doing that, because you're not running the other cores, you're not going to be generating as much heat. You're not going to be requiring as much voltage. And so there is some headroom for which you can boost up the frequency, boost up the core voltage to give you that extra little bit of performance. And that is what the boost frequency is. It basically says if you're just running one or two cores, we can actually boost the frequency of those cores up by 500 megahertz, up by you know a whole gigahertz, just for a short amount of time when you get that one job done and then it will get done quickly and then the, the frequencies and the voltages can come down again. 
So all this is happening in a tug of war between the performance at one corner, the amount of power that's being used in another corner, and the temperature that that power is resulting in in another corner. And when you're working in an optimal situation, you get the most performance without too much overheating and without using too much power. So for example, on the i7, 5960X, it can boost to 3.5 gigahertz from a base of three gigahertz when there are one or two cores being used. But if you're using between three and eight cores, it can still do boosting, but up to only 3.3 gigahertz. And then that boosting itself is limited to when you start to run all the cores at that higher frequency. In the end, the heat generated will cause them to drop back down again to the base frequency so that things can cool down. And that's why it's called boost because of course it is short term. It's just a quick uplift, just a quick extra bit of power, maybe for uh, you know a few seconds, maybe for a few minutes, but at some point it's gonna reach a point where it's gonna have to just bring everything down again to reduce uh, the amount of heat that's being produced. And when it comes to marketing and trademarks, we're talking about AMD's Precision Boost and Intel's Turbo Boost. Now, a couple of things worth mentioning with Intel's Turbo Boost 3, Intel have actually incorporated some information on the actual die inside the chip that tells the chip which of its cores is the best at running at a high frequency. And then when it wants to boost just kind of one core, it can really try and boost it as high as it can for a short time because it knows that of all the silicon that's on that chip, this one core might be core number three is actually the best one at running at a high single frequency. And so it uses that in conjunction with a driver and the operating system to kind of use that to boost up single core performance. And the difference between Precision Boost 2 and Precision Boost 1 is that Precision Boost 2 gives you a lot more granularity. So before it was basically one and two cores gave you one level, and then once you got to three cores or more, it dropped down in a straight step and then gave you a second level. But Precision Boost 2 gives you that kind of granularity. There's a different boost level for, for three cores, there's a different boost level for four cores, until it kind of trickles down to that kind of maximum boost that's available when you've got all cores active. And it's also just worth mentioning the uh, XFR, which is also version one and two with AMD at the time of making this video, and that's the extended frequency range. And that basically is rewarding people who put good coolers on their processors. The CPU will recognize that actually the heat that's being generated is being dissipated very quickly, so it can afford to kind of just push that little bit extra more because maybe you've put some kind of you know liquid cooling on your processor. And AMD talk about maybe a 7% a performance boost when you stick a sort of third party or expensive cooling on your processor because it's able to apply the, the boosting technology just a bit longer because the heat is being taken away uh, so much quicker. Okay, so in summary then, uh, a modern processor that supports these boosting things, not all of them do, but a modern processor that supports boosting will have a base frequency that it was guaranteed to run at regardless of the workload, and there's a boost frequency which you can try to attain when the power consumption and the temperature allow it to for short amounts of time. Okay, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. You know what else I'm gonna ask you? Please share this on social media, please subscribe to the channel, and please tell me about your experiences using Turbo Boost or Precision Boost in the comments below, because I'd be really interested to hear what kind of success you've had with these technologies. Okay, well that's about it, so I'll see you in the next one.